Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you guys about sandboxing applications using Fire Jail. And I want to give a shout out to Nico who reminded me the other day about this. I meant to do this video a little bit back, but it slipped my mind. So today we're going to go over the basics of how to use Fire Jail. And later on, so we don't intimidate anyone, we'll save some of the more uh, intimidating tactics for later down the line in another video. But today I want to talk a little bit about how to isolate processes and applications from things they don't need access to. So that's what a sandbox is. It creates a box for that application to run in, in a, in a matter of speaking, in that your editors, you don't necessarily want having access to the internet, you know, in case they could be exploited in some way by using that access. So we run things like that inside a sandbox. The great thing about Fire Jail is it uses all the internal tools of the Linux kernel to accomplish this task and it has a ton of profiles that are already built so you don't have to worry about knowing a whole lot about it to get started and that's what we're going to show today so this is a application for fire jail how would we start up a process with fire jail well we would do fire jail and then the name of the command or application we're running so let's say we want to do fire jail firefox that would run Firefox inside a sandbox. Takes a moment to get everything ready for the sandboxing. Then the application will load and run just as fast as it always does. You'll note it says file not found. Well, it normally would have the page that would say, you know, Linux Firefox, but for some reason it says file not found. Well, I can tell you why it says file not found. It's because it's running in a sandbox and it actually can't access this file. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to whitelist locations so you can give access of your you give your applications access to the locations you need them to have access to. For example, if you had Firefox here not being able to access your downloads directory, you wouldn't be able to select files from it to upload on websites. And that's pretty important for most people, and I've experienced this myself in the past on a default profile for Firefox. What we'll do is we're going to add this pages directory to our whitelist by going through the Fire Jail configuration profile for Firefox. And what we'll do there is we will go into the directory where we can find it etc slash Fire Jail. And here we have all these default profiles. We'll see a ton of them if you list the directory. What we want to look at today is the Firefox profile. So we'll do Firefox.profile, and that's what we're going to open and edit. Now we're going to use sudo to open Firefox.profile. Now we are looking at the profile for Firefox. If you note here, it says whitelist. Well, we want to ensure that we can access our downloads directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a whitelist line for it. Whitelist. Then we're going to do home directory. And then downloads. So this way, when I want to upload something, I won't have any trouble accessing my downloaded files. What we're also going to do for this example, we're going to add a whitelist line for that home page that said file not found. And then we're going to reload it just to show you how easy it is to add a whitelist here. All you need to do is write the word whitelist and then the location. Then we save the file and when we open the next process of Firefox and Fire Jail, we should have no problems seeing that home page. So let's try it out. Fire Jail, Firefox, and let's see if the home page shows this time. Great, so as you can see, everything worked as expected. We added a whitelist line, and what it did was it allowed us to access this page, because this is not an actual external website. This is a file 
on my computer or my tablet actually here. What else can we do with Fire Jail? Can we check on our processes? Yes, you can do that too. Let's check that out. So let's go ahead and see what's running in Fire Jail. All we have to do is Fire Jail and then List. As you can see, it shows us Fire Jail is running Firefox in the sandbox. So we can see that our sandbox is up and running successfully. If you want to ever check that. Do you ever think about making all your applications sandboxed? You can do that. It may not be recommended unless you're willing to configure a lot of it, but let's go ahead and tell you the command to do that. sudo fire cfg and that'll make something for every program. Then once you install a new application, you simply run sudo fire cfg once again and then you'll have it rebuild with the newly installed application. We're not going to run that right now though. Now, what's here's a tip I got. If you want Firefox to always run in Fire Jail Sandbox when you tap the Firefox icon, simply edit its desktop configuration file. Let's go ahead and do that. So what we'll do is we'll go to slash user slash share slash applications. This is where we'll find the desktop files. Now we're in that directory. We can see all of our different desktop files here. And from here, we will simply edit the Firefox desktop file. So we see the desktop file here. We've got it open in an editor using sudo. Scroll down till we see the word ex EC it stands for executable and here we are at executable EXEC what we'll do is we'll simply put fire jail on the front of that and give it a space and then the Firefox command and we'll write that file we'll exit it and now when we tap on our Firefox icon we will have a newly sandboxed Firefox every single time we run Firefox so let's go ahead and try it And we added our whitelist, so now our home page file is loading properly. So as you can see, it's that easy to add whitelists to things you want your application to have access to. Let's go ahead and list it and make sure it's running in Fire Jail. Fire Jail. Great. So we can see it's run successfully. Now every time we hit that Firefox icon, we will have a sandbox Firefox, not just a wide open, ready to exploit Firefox. So let's go ahead and see. There's also Fire Tools is another application you can get to help you manage it. So that's Fire Jail. Now I wanted to show you the basics of it. It's a sandbox utility where you can you know integrate sandboxes into your computer for each application individually and this can really add a layer of safety to you and your computer use and as well as the PinePhone. So I did this video in a lot of ways for PineTab PinePhone users that a lot of them, I'm not sure if they even know what Fire Jail is. Some are newer users and I thought it'd be good to explore this subject today and I appreciate Nico for reminding me. We'll go further into Fire Jail and Fire Tools and all the other configurations that are available including App Armor. So we'll save that for another video. Like this video, share it, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on how you can protect yourself online.